What is up, you guys? It's Tony Holiday, back at it again with another video. Today, we're gonna be going over part two of the Step Sequencer series using the new Step Sequencer in Logic 10.5. The first one, which was yesterday, was for more drum hits and using the different modes to use that. Today, we're gonna be going over it and using it as for melodic instruments, synths, maybe bass, and different things like that as well. Before we get started, please go follow me on all socials, that is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. Let's get straight into the video, you guys, and we're gonna show you how to use the step sequencer for more melodic instruments in Logic Pro 10.5. Let's go. All right, you guys, so you should be able to see my logic here. What we have is just a drum sequence, step sequencer pattern that we did from part one of the step sequencer video. And what we're gonna do is just go get a brand new software instrument by pressing this plus here, software instrument create. You can also double click into this region here and it will make a new uh, track for you as well. We're just gonna use the instrument six there. And we're gonna go into the logic library on the left there. You can also do that if you hover there, you'll see the hot key, which is Y. We're gonna go in and we're just gonna select a synth. Ambient lead, I think will be nice. So now that we have that, let's take just a little listen to it. So we'll close out the library and we're gonna make another pattern. We're actually just gonna solo out the ambient lead for now and then we'll actually listen to it with the drums later. So we can right click here, create pattern region, and that's gonna open up the step sequencer. Now this looks a little bit different than it did yesterday when we were doing the drums, and that's because we have these notes here versus the drum hits that we did inside the drum machine designer there. Well, that's kind of the point of this whole thing is that we're gonna be using this to place different melodic notes versus doing it in MIDI which is what more people are used to doing. I personally probably am gonna stick with MIDI for now. However, I can see if you use this system, you could get really quite good at it and make some really cool patterns and quickly, or even more quickly than using MIDI. I personally am just used to using MIDI so much that I've stuck with that for now. We have some notes here labeled, and if you take note, that's actually the C major scale. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. That's the default that a melodic instrument comes in when you load it into the step sequencer. You can tell by if you go to this inspector here over to the pattern region, we have the pattern key in C. You can see that when we select a different scale under the scale quantize section here, so for example in minor, the notes will change into a minor scale. So that will make sure that whatever notes you click in here are going to be in the natural minor scale of C. That is a really cool feature. It's kind of like what I did in my um, chords cheat codes or me melody cheat codes, except now all you can see is notes that are gonna be all in the scale. So let's just make a little pattern really quick and then we'll go from there. Let's actually just change it to like a basic piano here. Just an easier sound to hear. You don't wanna be hearing a synth over and over again, especially when I'm just clicking in random notes there. So I'm gonna go over the different modes here of what I didn't go over yesterday when we were doing drum hits. It's easier to explain some of these using melodic instrument. So from velocity value, we'll click that and we're gonna go straight to this note option here. These notes here are labeled out in each row, but let's say that you didn't have that to begin with and that you only had the one or you wanted to make it all in one row. Well, you can actually change these notes and if we turn on the MIDI out, you'll be able to hear it. So the row changed to a melodic row, and what that signifies is that you have notes in here that are not the same pitch. There's different pitches throughout. We could change each of these notes, and we could even create a little pattern here, and we'll solo it. nothing special and more just showing you kind of how the notes section works. I'm going to go back into having this as the scale like we did before. In the different rows for each note, I think it just gives it more of a visual to it. From the note, we'll go to the octave one next. It's essentially going to be the same thing as note, except rather than moving it up each semitone, you're going to be moving it up in, in increments of 12 semitones. So again, we'll use this A as an example. This is, we're using three, and we can go this down to two. Now it will be an octave lower, however, the same pitch, and these notes will remain the same. We can also do it with these ones as well. See so here how this one was a low octave? That's because it's in the, um, the two range. These two 
were in high, uh, higher range by being four, and these ones all remained in three. I wanna keep them all in the same, but again, just showing you the purpose of the octave. I will also show you guys the tie option. I think this is probably one of the more useful functions for the step sequencer, especially if you're making things like chords. And the reason being is because we can tie these notes together to make it actually sound like you're more playing them. So this could be the bass note. So as you can see here, you guys, what I've done is I've tied these notes together versus just being the single ones right there. And you can tell if a note's tied together by it has these little kind of diamonds there. And then the triangle signifies that you have the potential to tie that together like that. So now if I play this, it's gonna sound like a chord effectively because the notes are being played together and they're actually a longer decay than just these single ones here. So let's take a listen. So that's a really useful tool to use if you are making melodic patterns, especially if you're doing things like different velocities, you can make some really realistic things using the step sequencer. From there, you guys, I actually kind of went over the, um, all the other modes in the previous video in part one. But something else that I wanna show you here is if we do go into this uh, back end here where the patterns are. So if we go patterns, melodic, you see that we have these uh, different options that come stock with Logic. Let's try something like Eternal Echoes and just see how that sounds. It was all made in this step sequencer that came stock with Logic. Well, if you wanna look at the different kind of uh, details and what they've changed there, what you can do is go to the uh, view, display edit mode values, always for all rows. And then if you go here, you can see, so for example, the step rates, you can see all the different step rates throughout the notes. The velocity will definitely be different on some of them. As you can see, just by hearing it, the velocities are different. So this note has them going down like that. And now let's actually use this with the drums that we made yesterday and just kind of see how it sounds together. Another thing what you can do as well is go into this functions and you have these transpose options here, which will change the notes based on their octave or semitone. So maybe we want it to be another octave higher. And that just took all the notes and moved them up an octave. Now, something that I think is probably the most powerful with the melodic side is having this pattern key and scale quantize feature. You can essentially set yourself up into different modes or keys or different scales, and you can make patterns solely in that scale and it will only show you those notes. For example, Spanish flamenco music a lot of the time is used with Phrygian. So we have the Phrygian mode here. I'm gonna change to E, I just like the sound of that one. And now let's take a listen to this. Maybe bring it down an octave. And we can also do major, minor. These notes are all being transposed corresponding to the scale quantize feature with each key here. That is something that's super cool in my opinion because it really just gives you the freedom to not worry too much about the theory and you can rather just start clicking things in and starting to really hear how they sound and training your ears effectively. Back into this pattern section here, what we also have is a bass section, which is really interesting. Well, they have all these different modes that they've made up and we can use those to maybe get a start for some ideas using the step sequencer. So rather than using a piano, I'm gonna go over to something like a synth bass, techno FM bass for the preset. For the um, pattern here, maybe let's try something like, I don't know, old school. And you can see all the different uh, patterns there. They're moving in different ways. And that's because maybe this, um, the step rate is different. So as you can see, C1 is at 16th notes. These are at, uh, you know, eighth, 16th, 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 eighth. What I'm trying to say, you guys, is when you look at the step sequencer for melodic instruments, it's really cool to go into these presets here and just see what they've done. I'm sure if you spent enough time using the step sequencer, it might overtake MIDI. Personally, I'm sticking with MIDI for now. I just, I'm used to it. I like the layout of a piano roll. However, this is a really cool instrument. So let's just kind of finish this off by going back to Eternal Echoes and we're gonna change the preset to something like, do like a pluck synth. Cavernous Dreams with Eternal Echoes. I'm sure that's gonna be lovely. And I'm also gonna change the pattern to, let's do F harmonic minor. It 
It's almost kind of like a trippy sort of Q-beat style ambient lead there. As you can see, just by messing with the different patterns that they've given us in this actual section here for stock, it can make some really cool stuff, even just to throw in the back end. You know, it's almost like dragging in an Apple loop using these patterns. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. I hope this kind of did a little bit of debunking for the new step sequencer for you with 10.5 Logic. I've been using it a ton for drums. I haven't been using it much for melodic stuff yet. However, I'm gonna be trying to use it more and more as I can see how powerful it can become if you get a good workflow going with it. With that being said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure to hit subscribe, make sure to go follow me on all socials, that's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I will see you in the next video. Tony Holiday, signing off, and thanks for watching. Cheers.